Organ Donation After Circulatory Determination of Death Introduction by Dr. Sally Vitali. Please note that in this video we will be following the guidelines used at Boston Children's Hospital. Some of this information may need to be modified based on the guidelines and practices in place in your institution. This video is part one of a series on the organ donation after circulatory determination of death, or DCDD, process at Boston Children's Hospital. My name is Sally Vitali, and I'm a pediatric intensivist here at the hospital. In this video, I will introduce the concept of DCDD and cover the process of referral, patient eligibility, approach, and consent. There are two pathways to organ donation at the end of a patient's life. The most common pathway since the late 1960s has been donation after neurologic determination of death or donation after brain death. A more recent option for families is donation after circulatory determination of death, or DCDD, which was previously called donation after cardiac death. Donation after neurologic determination of death occurs following the diagnosis of brain death, which is made using strict clinical criteria. The patient is declared dead but remains supported by a mechanical ventilator and possibly cardiac medications or ECMO in an intensive care unit. The family is approached for consent and if they consent, arrangements are made for the body to be taken to the operating room for organ recovery. In DCDD, a family and the medical team have made a decision together at the end of a child's life that life-sustaining treatments, including a ventilator, will be withdrawn. If the patient is medically eligible and likely to die within 60 minutes of discontinuing the ventilator, the family is approached for consent. If they consent, the medical team and the family will go with the patient to the operating room for the withdrawal of the ventilator and any cardiac support. If the patient progresses to a pulseless arrest within two hours of withdrawing the ventilator, the family will remain in the first operating room. The ICU attending and fellow will take the patient's body into a separate operating room where the organ recovery surgery will take place. When five minutes have passed after the pulseless arrest and there has been no spontaneous return of pulses, the patient is declared dead and the organ recovery surgery commences. If the patient does not die within the required time frame for donation, they return to the ICU for continuing end-of-life care. Now that you know what DCDD is, you may be wondering which of our patients can potentially become organ donors via the DCDD pathway. Any patient who is mechanically ventilated and whose family and medical team have decided that the ventilator and cardiac support, including ECMO, will be withdrawn at the end of life is a potential DCDD candidate. At Boston Children's, we refer all patients who meet these criteria for evaluation by our Organ Procurement Organization, or OPO, the New England Organ Bank, or NEOB. When should the referral take place? Federal regulations require that every hospital has defined triggers for referring patients for evaluation by an OPO. At Boston Children's, we refer all mechanically ventilated patients who will have the ventilator withdrawn as soon as that decision has been made by a family and the ICU team. If a family inquires about organ donation earlier, we may refer the patient earlier. And the NEOB determines the patient's medical eligibility for organ donation. The NEOB's evaluation for medical eligibility includes several important factors, namely the patient's organ function, particularly that of the kidneys and liver, any systemic infectious concerns or an unknown diagnosis that could be infectious, the chance for metastatic or primary cancer of the organs that would be transplanted, any underlying systemic genetic or metabolic disease that may affect organ function in the future, and whether there are potential recipients who need the patient's size of organs. Another very important issue for eligibility in DCDD is the likelihood that the patient will die within one hour of withdrawing the ventilator and any cardiac support. The NEOB will consult the ICU team about this likelihood. You may be wondering why the patient has to progress to pulselessness within two hours. The period of time after the ventilator and any cardiac support is stopped is a period of diminishing delivery of oxygen and nutrients to the organs that will be transplanted. We call this warm ischemic time. Generally speaking, the shorter the warm ischemic time, the healthier the transplanted organ will be. Up to two hours or 120 minutes is acceptable for the kidneys, and up to 30 minutes is acceptable for the liver. So what is the best way to talk to families about organ donation? It is common that someone in the patient's family or a family friend will ask about the option of organ donation before the OPO referral has been made or completed. Our first reaction to them should be the most natural one, which is to acknowledge that even raising this question is tremendously considerate and selfless. 
if the child is indeed mechanically ventilated and approaching the end of life, we need to let the family know that we do not know whether the patient is a candidate for organ donation because we need to ask the New England Organ Bank to evaluate. It's important to notify the patient's ICU attending that the family has asked about organ donation. The attending or their designee should inform the NEOB that the family has inquired. It's also important to avoid speculating with the family about organ donation or encouraging them to talk about it before the NEOB has been able to evaluate the patient and meet with the family. Families are struggling to make so many different decisions during this difficult time. It's important that they don't reach a premature decision about donation before they have all of the correct information. So how do we introduce the idea of donation to a family that hasn't brought it up? The best way to introduce the subject to a family will depend on the family and the circumstances. Our goal at Boston Children's is to have no unplanned mentions. That is, the introduction of the possibility of organ donation to a family should happen in a planned and deliberate fashion after a collaborative discussion between all members of the ICU team and the NEOB. The introduction should be timed so that the appropriate information resource, namely the NEOB team, is readily available to meet with the family, whether that be in person or by phone. If the family is interested in proceeding with DCDD, a meeting should be planned to explain the process in detail and obtained informed consent. In preparation for that meeting, members of the ICU team should review the Boston Children's Hospital policies and protocols for DCDD. The charge nurse, nursing director, and clinical director should be informed of the impending consent meeting. The clinical and nursing directors will ensure that any ethical concerns of the team members are addressed and that the team members understand that they may opt out of participation in DCDD. Some team members may be concerned about the exact definition of death or that any escalation of care for a patient who is at the end of life or prolonging of life to travel to the operating room is not consistent with ideal end-of-life care, even when the family wants the escalation and prolongation to be performed in pursuit of DCDD. Unit leadership will change patient assignments as necessary, and an ethics consult may be called at any time to aid in the discussion of these important issues. The NEOB and Boston Children's Hospital have separate consent forms, but the issues from both forms can ideally be addressed with the family in one conversation. Most importantly, the family should know that they may change their minds about DCDD at any point, and that no one on the NEOB or ICU team will be upset with them. We will simply proceed with the withdrawal of life-sustaining treatments in the ICU, as we do for most patients at the end of life. This concludes part one of the video series on DCDD at Boston Children's Hospital. Any questions about this material can be directed to your unit clinical or nursing director or to the Organ Donation Oversight Committee representatives from your unit. Thank you for taking the time to help improve the quality of our organ donation process at Boston Children's. Please help us improve the content by providing us with some feedback.